it was something. And I mean, I, I've been, I've seen dates, and I've seen times. Um, and maybe it's because this was a Wednesday, which was a combination of prevalent and um, forever traffic. I mean, they, they, they brought in somebody from the sheriff's office in chapels and stuff. It was, it was, it, it was, it, one it was ran the gamut. One of the benefits of her having been clerk in Douglas, she knows the court needs to be run. I mean, I still didn't take away from her own abilities, but this one. Yeah. I, yeah. That's good. Look, so, I couldn't tell you if, you know, as a layman, you know, you would be better able to say she could judge from mm -hmm. what those were. But to me, managing that whole thing, and Kim and I were like, how, I mean, she must have done all this prep beforehand because she's kind of reading off all this stuff. You had to do it that part of it, especially for the <coughs> family. And the city, this happens in city court and family court. The Supreme Court and county court, not so much. You have, you have to manage it, you lose a good term. That's exactly what it is. It's not, not really just making decisions. You're you know, sitting there on the island and deciding you're Right. It's managing this volume of people and all the activities coming out. Charlie, I was there from 5 to 6 15, and I, I'd love to know how long it went because they dented the number of uh, people that were in the court. I mean, dented, like maybe five or six got resolved, and there was still another 50. So, did this thing go on until 11 o'clock? No, no, not anymore. What do you think? There, there, there used to be, traffic. there used to be, I, I told stories when I was young. Example, some of the courts, Henrietta, which was one of the first towns to have three judges, would, would have courts starting at six at night or six in the morning. Oh my court. God! But the first the first trial I ever had in justice court was in the running line, and uh, I had been up, I had been in New York that day, so I was up very early and came back. I was scheduled at nine o'clock, and I get in front of the judges as well. No, no, no. Well, how do you do? Oh, well, guess you know. what? So you didn't, because we canceled it on the website, right? I, yeah, I came in, we're here in the other one. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I think we're going to work today for some. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's see. We should. You know, and I'm sorry. Interestingly enough, um, on Monday, we decided we didn't have enough information oh, to make a negative declaration on the secret. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just had a meeting, and 20 people were in this meeting, at Cold Fair Life at 2 30. Yeah. I saw a bunch and, of people leaving. Right? Yeah, and we just went over with them the different missing items or clarification items that need to be done so that we can do Seeker on September 7th. Okay. Now, before you book your flight to come no, down to September 7th, we're here. We're here. Um, <laughs> Cold Fair Life knows they got to get certain things back to. The town team and our attorney who's handling this by, by next Wednesday the 30th to keep that on. We are going to tentatively book it for September 7th. All right. But stay flexible. We're here on behalf of the facility. And we need to provide a lot of information yes, to them for that portion. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, in fact, I can read off my notes from the meeting. I just what you did so far. Uh, okay. Did, well, I can. I can so, sorry about that. No, no, we're, it's not you guys. Tentatively, the 7th. All right, I'll cancel it. 7 <laughs> Thank you. Nice. That would have been me. You too. <laughs> well, what do you say, Karen? Because I see Rick so and Jane are in the house. We <laughs> are. Come on, come on. Lisa. Okay. Well, well, welcome everybody to the, uh, I guess this is the Thursday, August uh, 24, 2023, Webster Town Ward Workshop. Uh, interestingly enough, we only have one item tonight. It's that special of an item. Wow. Uh, yes. Uh, That's so impressive. And um, I just want to say that before I hand the baton off to uh, Rick and Gene from uh, Gene O'Connell Associates and their presentation of what their firm does. I just wanted to take a little trip down memory lane on this uh, project uh, the town has been endeavoring in for over a year now. Um, 
Patty Vitaldi, our deputy town supervisor, I think you were in the first meeting in early August 2022, where we had a think tank amongst about 10 key people in town government to say, look, we got a lot of things going on in this town in the next couple of years, major projects. We need a proactive uh, strategy on how to identify and then apply for, and then if we are lucky enough to get awarded grants, manage the grants. And heretofore, uh, the town government strategy on that was really when we hired the uh, engineering firm to do the design of a municipal project, one of their ancillary services was to help us get grants. And um, so that was kind of the genesis of it. And, and Patty, I know you were at several of those meetings. It was interesting early on. Anytime you have a think tank and you're starting with a blank piece of paper, it's interesting. But as we moved forward, uh, I think it was earlier this year, um, there was a, a, a request for proposal that was put out, I think a dozen to 14 firms uh, proposed something to the town of how they uh, saw they could help the town with this. Uh, a committee that we had, a subcommittee, um, vetted those applications and came down to four that presented at a workshop, I think back in June, in May. Um, and because we said this is one of these things where we want to make sure we get it right, uh, we, we kind of regrouped after we had the workshop and had four firms present. And within that regrouping and looking at this, uh, one of the firms that had originally um, submitted an application was Gene O'Connell Associates. Gene O'Connell Associates. And I guess without further ado, we thought it was a good move to have Gene and Rick from the Gene O'Connell Associates come in and, and do a presentation to the town board and to the community who brought it here live and watches this on what their firm does within the grant process to see if uh, maybe as we go forward it fits into the town's vision of uh, identifying, applying, and managing grants. So <laughs> there's my long preamble. Gene and Rick, I have the time to you guys. Thank you for the opportunity to uh Speaking to, speak to you tonight. Uh, before I get down to business, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I have done this work for over 30 years, but I had th I've had three lives. And the first one, I was a school teacher, and I taught art for many years, and I taught senior citizen painting in the town, and all kinds of things like that. And then my second life, um, I was the first director of the Clarence Senior Center and moved into a brand new building that had absolutely nothing in it but a desk for me, and the place was empty, it was filled with community development funds. And I came in June, and for six months, my salary and what I had to spend was $5,000 for six months. So I learned how to get very inventive and how to um, you know, scamp nickels out of the pot machine, hold various uh, sundry things like uh, flea markets and things like that, so we could exist. And five years later, probably, well, maybe in the fourth year, I hired a grant writer there to work for me, with me. And he used to come in all the time with his pile of grants and say, and I'd criticize something and he'd say, oh, Gene, you're so good at this, you ought to come work for me. So they wouldn't make my job full-time at the senior center. It certainly was a full-time job. I was staying many hours past the 20. And so I said, okay, let's go. And so I resigned. And I resigned after five years of having 2,000 members, uh, 200 volunteers, an outreach program. I started Meals on Wheels. And everything was great there. I had a volunteer party. They loved me. But I felt like I needed something more. So I went to work for him and found out he didn't really know much about grant writing. He had reviewed grants in, in the service, but really he was starting out too. But he was a great salesman and he could sell you anything, so I believed him. So anyways, I decided, well, I said it now, I might as well keep going. So basically I learned how to do this on my own. And what he knew was I came from a very political family. Uh, my uncle was actually a congressman at one point. So I was used to politics. My father was the town chairman in our town. 
they used to have secret meetings in our spare bedroom, and you know, so I knew a lot about politics, and he didn't really know much about it at all. So he said, Gene, why don't you uh, do municipal work? I have never done any of that. I only do not for profits. So I started out with him the first day. Uh, we went to three towns and never landed any of them. So I left the next time, and I went by myself, and the first client I talked to, I was signed up, and that was the beginning of this. And why I like it is because there are so many places, just like yours, that never really got into grant writing. They hit and miss, you know, somebody comes in and writes a grant, but it's not a whole process that keeps going on. And so I decided that's how it had to be. So when I left him, I left with no clients, and five, I had five clients at the time. What person can do about five clients and you're killing yourself? So I left and I managed to re-sign four of them. So I started again, uh, and when I got to five or six, I said, what am I going to do? i got to hire people. You know, there's, if I want to serve these people, which I do, I've got to find a way. So that's how I started my business. And it's a New York State woman-owned business, and I have survived all these years in that business. And I've come to love it. I love what I do. Every day is interesting because I deal with all kinds of wonderful people, like your supervisor here, who, who loves to chat me up, and I like to chat people up too, so it's okay. So that's, that's how I started, and grew the business and kept by getting employees and paying them. So this is, a, this is a real business where I pay taxes on them, I pay Social Security on them. They are not contracted consultants, they are my employees. And so then this man now, over here, Mr. Richard Mangusa, he is my office manager, and he was looking for something to do, so I'd like him to tell about his side. Sure. So for uh, many years, I was the business administrator for the Clarence Schools. And then I just pretty much wanted a change. Um, and then I, I came here. But being the business administrator, I naturally, you know, we had 800 employees, we had a $100 million budget. So the business end of O'Connell is something that is, is very easy for me to take care of. Uh, grants for the school district, you know, my office was in charge of researching grants, getting grants for the school district. Uh, obviously, we had to write the grants, and we had to run the grants. So uh, I would say in any of those years, we probably had $5 million worth of grants. Um, when COVID came, that quadrupled, and all the grants that, that we had to run, administer, apply for, and make sure that we had um, uh, perfect compliance with, uh, just, just grew and grew. And uh, so it gave me quite a good background to come here and do this. Unfortunately, since he had such a great budget where he was, he loves to pay my employees a lot of money. So that, that is a little problem. That he I wants have. me to pay him the 5000 for six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be great. But anyways. So we're here tonight to talk about grant writing, and I know you've heard many people speak to you about it, so I won't keep boring you by repeating the same old things. Um, I think it would be good if we're going to be talked about our, the way we work versus what you heard before, because I did listen to it all, so I know. Okay. Sure. Um, we did go through and listen to the presentations, and um, a, a lot of what they all said that was the same we won't repeat. Uh, you know, we have a staff of six people, and, and our crew will research grants for every entity that's out there. We have a huge database of grants that we have done in the past, but we have a huge database of funding agencies and what can get funded and for who. Um, you know, disadvantaged communities, you're not a disadvantaged community. You know, so, so we don't spend time looking for those grants for you. Um, we do know all the um, political players in every area. We get to know them very closely so that we can do SAM grants and we can get the maximum funding for you. Um, you know, we're in the middle of some DEC grants. We're in the middle of getting some um, uh, electric charging stations for a lot of people. We just submitted at the end of July the, um, the large state consolidated funding uh, applications are due 
So, you know, for pretty much every one of our municipal clients, we submitted at least one or two large grants. Uh, we submitted one, uh, actually a $10 million one for your neighbor, East Rochester. So we, we go through all of those. Constant communication um, with, number one, a liaison that typically you will appoint, but um, our, our meetings for needs assessment in the very beginning are, are critical. Uh, you probably have 12 to 15 department heads. Um, those department heads we will meet with separately, um, get their wish list, um, then we will meet with uh, you know, uh, supervisor to go through the wish list, make sure that everything that we see and the time frames that we see them um, go along with your master plan. How old your master plan? Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads it, me... It's not a teenager yet. No, it is a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me probably to the most important thing you can do, and that's planning. Planning is so important to most of these things. They just love it when you can quote a plan. And the more planning you do, the better. Um, Rick gave me attachments here that have some of our projects on it. Just turn to the one that says Seneca Falls. I worked there for probably. I'm there right now. Yeah. Actually, I'm the project manager for this um, project on the fourth floor. On which one, pardon? On the fourth floor, U.S. ceilings. I'm the project manager. Oh, okay. We're doing ship lab and uh, drywall on the fourth floor. So I was going to ask you about the, this project you Okay. Well, when I talk about planning, Seneca Falls, I started there with a planner and, and got him to not only spiff, biff, spiff up their comprehensive plan, but we did an economic development plan. There were a couple other ones. And when you look at this page, these are all things that happened there because there were plans to back them up. Um, you can see that on the waterfront, the uh, little, whatever you call it, gazebo, whatever, um, that was a, a New York State Department of Transportation project where we did the sidewalks and things like that and it was like, you know, $812,000. We did, going down the page, we did uh, Main Street Grant, about three of them. This is just one of them. And then the next one is a Department of State Canal Grant where we put up um, docks and things like that. The bottom one is the National Women's Hall of Fame, which we I applied for a $2.5 million grant to restore, and it had to go through the town. It couldn't go through them. And so they got that, and it was the beginning of their converting this factory building to the National Women's Hall of Fame. And today we still do all their grants administration, so we're pretty familiar with that project. But that was something that built on this original grant that was from the town. So if you want to go back, and you can see that on um, the first page is the Riviera Theater, that's in North Tonawanda. And that um, is what we did there was a historic preservation grant and it allowed us to fix up the, uh, the front of it and, and put the bright lights on that and make it really wonderful. And I was just eating there a couple of nights ago, not in the theater, but down the street. And I could see the, the thing is so great and it looks so wonderful. And now I guess they're gonna start um, really doing their plant, their uh, other renovation. But that's how it all started and it really has added to the little downtown. Uh, the next one is from the town of Whitestown, and that is a perfect example of why you need someone like us. Because when this program first came out, this first year, and I always say, if it's new, try it, if it fits the guidelines, because they don't really know what they're looking for the first year either, and maybe they'll be lucky, but so I always encourage my clients to try. So this was the first year of the program, and they got a bridge New York grant for $1.4 million. And this bridge was flagged. So I knew when it was flagged that it was one they wanted to do. So those are the kinds of things, the knowledge that we have that helps you. So I can either say, hey, you got a great project because your bridge was flagged, or you know, don't waste your time because they got all those with flags ahead of them. When I drive down the freeway tonight, look at some of them, I see them. Um, the next one is the Iger Building, that's in East Rochester, and that's where they now have their Village Town Hall. 
and this is an example of lots of grants getting to the end, okay? It wasn't just one thing. And you can see that it used to be the Xerox building, they got it, they gave it to them, and then they ripped down the village hall next to it, which, don't tell Marty I said this, but really was a very ugly town hall, village hall, and he would tell you that too. So I hope he doesn't watch this. Anyways, and so this started out with them getting that building donated, and then the downstairs is all commercial re retail, and then the upstairs is all their office buildings. And we got money to do all kinds of things like the records room and their libraries and their senior center. There's all kinds of things going on in there. And we just um, got in a new elevator because whoever designed it had a teensy little elevator that nobody could even get upstairs and downstairs if there was an emergency. So he's been harping about that forever. So that's finally coming to fruition too. So it was a combination of things that got that done. So many times it is. Uh, the last one that I brought along was the Mossy Bank Park and the Village Bath. Probably in my mind, and I've been in a lot of parks over 30 years, the most beautiful park I was ever in. And it's not in the village. It sits up on a bluff overlooking the expressways below. And you have to sort of wind up there to get there. And it's, it's a really beautiful secluded place. But if you look at that little building in the left, that was the, the uh, existing bathroom, which was quite ugly. And if you look at the right, there's the million dollar bathroom. Mm -hmm. I think at the time it cost like three hundred and seven thousand dollars to put it in. Yeah, three twenty. Well that was the whole that was the whole grant. We got the swing sets and some other trail things to walk around, exercise trails. So sometimes these things cost a lot more than they thought. They thought, oh this little restaurant's gonna cost a hundred thousand. I said, no, 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 no. And it's it it's absolutely gorgeous like a gorgeous one that's brand new on the throughway or something that looks wonderful. But these are the kinds of things that we've done. I mean, you name it, I've been in a sewer plant. I've been in lots of dirty records rooms. I've been all over. Um, and the thing is, you could hire an engineering firm, but they're just interested in engineering work. We will do everything. If your library needs something, if your youth people need something, you know, the police, whoever, you name it, we've written it. So that's the important part of what we do. And it's key to continue, you know? You can't just stop and start grant writing. It doesn't work that way. Because a lot of it is cyclical, so we'll know what is going to happen. And we'll know if you don't have something like a plan or an updated comprehensive plan or things like that. It's really important to get those things in order or an engineering concept drawing, or, you know, prices, you name it. There are things we need from other people. We're, not, we're dependent on people to give us information. We can write the story, but we can't invent whatever it is you need. So we always like to have, you know, people that will be willing to help us. We work, we work with many engineering firms and all kinds of people, so it's not a problem. That's what we do. We also know what grants need special administration. Some grants, um, and, and it's not contingent on the size of the grant. You might get a $5 million grant that it's going to be easy. You're not going to need our help to administer it. You might, uh, we're in the middle of uh, renovating a park for one of our clients. It's a $380,000 grant. We're going to spend a lot of time helping them administer that grant. There's too many facets to it, too many bids that have to go out, uh, too, many, too much paperwork for ADA compliance and all those other things. So we're going to be working with them quite a bit. But we will know up front, typically, how much um, work and, and what it will entail when we write the grant and then at the award time. Yeah, so and sometimes there is money in the grant, not always, but sometimes. There's money in the grant for the administration of it. Yes, okay. sometimes, not always, but certain ones, yes. And it does help because being a um, certified building business, you meet the state criteria for a lot of that. Yeah, you can come us. When they tell you you have 30%, whatever, we can do 15%, half of it, whatever. Would you like to ask us some questions now that you've heard most of them? I, I got a question. Sure. You know, I'm, really, I'm not a woman, I'm, I'm, Oh. I am a citizen, that's all I'm interested in. And, and, uh, do you apply for grants from private foundations as well? We can. Um, if you have a uh, 501c3, like sometimes the libraries have them, or recreation, or some of those things. Uh, I just had a call from one of the clients a couple days ago, and 
she had she was doing library construction. In fact, it was an elevator, and had already gone to the state library construction grant program. But they has a 50-50 match, so she's short 50 plus prices increase. And she had already gotten a SAM grant from her, or no, she couldn't get a SAM grant. That's right, because you can't match federal with federal money. Um, so she was looking for other money. I said, well, do you have a library, not-for-profit, friends of the library, something like that, that I could work with? She says, well, sort of. We have one, but we never filed the tax papers, and we really don't do anything with it. And I'm going, well, that's not going to work. But if you have a viable one that does function and does report, yes, we can go to the foundations and get the money that way sometimes. So it would have been perfect had she done that, because we could have looked for things with the foundations. We, we do all kinds of work. I've represented all kinds of 501c3s over the years, so we know how to do it now. We do a lot of work with fire halls, too. Yeah. Anything else you want to know? My goodness. Okay. It's not so much a question. I could have sworn Maria helped me out on this one when we met with Rick and Dean three weeks ago. Didn't we let them know the word we'd be wasted and up, updating our master plan? I don't know if it came up, did it? Really? I, I don't actually think that we did. Mm -hmm. No, we are. We are. Yes. Okay. Oh, good. Happy and, day. And we got the smart growth grant for $100,000 from New York State. To do it. Mm -hmm. To do it. Okay. And it's been, it's it's great. We got hundred grand, but we also are about nine months behind our timeline because we can't move forward with advertising the RFP for consultants until the New York State smart growth people less it. Oh, okay. And we've somewhat been, I want to say, chasing them around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did Yeah, make sure when you do it that you put the pertinent projects in that you see down the line because, you know, I can, I can refer to the things, but if the project's actually in there and I can say, look at page five and it talks all about it, that really helps. So, you know, be very visionary about the kinds of things you want to happen here in the next five years or so. so and once a year, once it's adopted, review it. And put you in a debt, make amendments to it. Any grant that you have currently, or you might write yourself, sometimes it's a quick application, we still can administer for you. It doesn't mean, it doesn't have to be a grant that we wrote for you. Well, it's interesting when you said, Rick, that you, know, you can get a $5 million grant and it's just it, they give you the money and they say mm -hmm. you're done. And then you can get a $200,000 grant and they put you through a baton death march. Uh, I hate to say it. It's no, no. Paul Adams, our finance director, probably can attest to that first and foremost. <laughs> yes, there's quite a bit of administration uh, beginning the MWBE, there's mm -hmm. violence every quarter, more than reports. Oh, yeah. Claims. Uh, we have Paula Friedman in my office who kind of heads that up, but she works with a number of people in engineering and community development to uh, get the job done. Sure. It's and mind boggling. It, and it, it's so funny because, you know, smaller towns such as yours, less than yours, you know, they think, oh, we're going to get the check tomorrow and then we're going to go spend it. I go, no, 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 it doesn't work that yeah. way. <laughs> it's like, the very, you know, the smaller they are, the harder it is for them to realize that. But and it's really hard sometimes to stop them from doing something before they should do it too. So that's why when we administer it, we keep our eyes on it so that anything's happening and we say, you know, they always want to start before they have a signed contract. No, we can't do that. You know, so we sort of yes, it's, it's amazing a lot of projects that do get started with no signed contracts. Right? You, you've experienced that, uh -huh. right? So we're very good at making a stop. <laughs> it, it's interesting, you had said earlier that you watched the video of the workshop uh, two mm -hmm. or three months ago where the four finalists from our vetting process, you know what I call it, presented. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some laughs on it when we got together with you uh, three weeks ago. Is that <laughs> we, well, it makes sense. We gave them, a, we gave them all the same project. Yeah. And it was our sandbar park phase two, so at least easier to compare apples to apples on how they operate. Even though this is a professional service, it's very difficult to analyze what you're getting. It's not, we're not buying a product. Right. I mean, that is, well, we're buying this. This firm charges me a dollar, this firm charges me 50 cents. Kind of easy. 
take the firm that's 50 cents. In this, because it is, and I go back to a year ago when we had a think tank on this, about how we're going to go about this. Here to four, we've had engineering firms with their ancillary business do this for us. I don't think they've charged us for No, us it's, no, they charge you when they got the job and put it in there. You never knew what they charged. I, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. So this is, you know, I, the fact that the four finalists presented, you did say that the one that stuck out to you was the same one that at least the, the vetting committee or whatever had chosen. Yeah. Similar to your firm in that they are uh, solely doing grants. It's not an ancillary division of their business that feeds the core business of engineering, but that what you said earlier, when you were a one-person shop, you really can only manage four or five clients. Correct. And you, you're out of bandwidth. Um, I think that that person in that firm is experiencing that right now. Absolutely. Um, I know she is. I can tell by what she said. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's interesting because uh, besides the fact that I got a couple calls from people I know who utilize your services who said you should really take a serious look at Dino Connell Associates, um, the fact that your structure seemed to appeal to what we're trying to do but you had grown it, so it's uh, it's not all you. Right. Um, was appealing, but the the thing that the town government has never uh, experienced before, like you said, it's built into the engineer's pricing. You just don't know it. Is that if we take a firm that is not an engineering firm, such as yours, well, that there's there's a contract and there's a there's a pricing model for that. I don't want to get into too much detail on that tonight, but your model, if, if I remember correctly, is um, an annual, you know, monthly fee, annual fee, right. whatever, and, and within that is the identification and application for grants. Mm -hmm. The separate charges are if the town decides we'd like you to manage that. Grant. Right. And here to four, we've never had the option of having a firm manage a grant. And I don't want to speak for Paul and some of the other people like Josh and, and Maria and whatever, but some of these grants, the management of them is, is very difficult. And I would imagine if some of the grants have a component in them where you can get administration monies in them, Correct. I don't think if we're administrating our own grants, we could get that money. Yes, sir. Really? How, how would we quantify managing your own grants. Well, you'd have to go through a process and they'd have to pay it. But you don't want to do that. You want me to do it. Right. And I, just, well, I, I don't. I, and I know the most recent one, which has been, it's great. We got the DEC forestry grant to buy 28 acres. Uh-huh. And I don't know if that one had any administration in it. Because it was no administration. No idea. Yeah. But I know that. But like Main Street. Yeah. Main Street it's grant has the administration, hasn't it? Uh, yes, it has. Yes. <laughs> We've earned that two hundred eighty-five thousand. Yeah. yeah, the Main Street grant is one of them that has been, and that's probably the most painful one of all, because it's a conglomeration of buildings that they all want something, so they treat each building as a separate grant actually, and that is like tear your hair out, hair out time, and I'm sure that a lot of them probably never got closed out because if someone didn't know what they were doing, it was very painful. Also, administration doesn't have to be involved or nothing. Your office is doing certain things, but you want assistance on some of it. We're able to do that. Yeah, or you could just say, mm -hmm. "Take it." No, <laughs> I don't want to be bothered with this at all, and we just do everything. I think we would uh, supplement uh, for certain grants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's a, an appealing option that here before we have not had. Right. Never had. Uh, so. And I and when I first started, I didn't do that. And then I realized what was happening was all these people had my had gotten my money, and they were not doing anything with it and I went, oh my goodness, I gotta do the other end too, or this is gonna look really bad and it's gonna go after something. Yeah, we get a grant award for somebody and because they don't follow through, and there are steps when you get the award and, and a lot of those steps are, are time sensitive. That by 30 days you have to do this, and by 90 days you have to do that just to um, make the award viable. <clears throat> and uh, too many clients just let it go off. Thinking that kind of thing. Well, well, they're going to send me a check and then we'll figure it out. 
Yeah, you can bombard it with emails with oh, yeah. requests, and I think the tendency is just I'll get to it. Off the sure. um, I gave you a list of three towns that are similar in size to use on this paper, so you can sort of see. Town of Tonawanda, we do all of their grants administration. When we got that bid, won that bid, they had had a previous grant writer who, had, who died suddenly, and she was actually someone that I had taught to grant writers. <laughs> but uh, she was um, doing all their administration too, but they didn't know what she was doing. So everything was like at her place. None of it was with the town. And that'll work that way, you know? When we get something done, you get the copy, you have it, you know what we're up to. Um, and it was like a nightmare for them to straighten that all out. But now we're in a good place where they know that we're the guys to go to. And I'm telling you, they've been a great client. Um, I love the supervisor. He's a wonderful uh, person. He knows what his town is up to. It's great. Now the next one, Town of Orchard Park, didn't have us do their uh, grants administration. But all of a sudden, they realized they were in trouble. So guess who's doing it now? <laughs> and the other one on the bottom is fairly new, so they will need it when it happens. But they, they just signed on. So. But that will give you an idea of some of them. Well, I think once again, Maria and I got the advantage for you to open the staff down to meeting them. I, I thought maybe because you're you know, in Clarence and Buffalo area, yeah. that you know maybe you just don't have any clients that are outside there. And all. this package shows, well, I know you have East Rochester, yeah. and they give you a blowing recommendation. This is Westchester County. Yeah, we have about four or five down there. You did it. Bath, Senate Falls, and then all of the state. Yes. yes. And now since Zoom happened, I mean you're close. To me, you're around the corner. But Westchester, you know, we Zoom them, whatever they say, border, whatever they want to talk to us. We talk projects that way, and it works out really well. In fact, a few of them have been hired on Zoom, so it's a new world. That's the only good thing that came out of COVID. Zoom. So, yeah. And it was very hard, I'll be honest, keeping my business together when COVID hit, because what do I do? I work with the government. What was the government doing? Nothing. So to survive that and get through it was really a, a hard process, but we're back on track now. Happy to be there. So. Well, I want to tell you a few things. I'm going to more questions and all that. I don't want to jump to conclusions here. But um, when Maria and I sat down with Rick and Jean, uh, three weeks ago, we said, well, let's compartmentalize in this process. Let's have the end on August 24th. You present to the board, they can ask you questions, uh, get to know what your product offering is, all that. Um, as we go through September, I want to make sure the board has an idea of the economics of this. When we had the final four people come in three months ago, we never got to that. All right. It was more. What do you think? What do you, What was your feeling <coughs> about these places? We had a subcommittee that was kind of vetting that, and then we were going to get into that part of the economics. I think the town board knew that it was going to be very different from when we have an engineering firm get our WIA grants uh, when they're doing millions of dollars of soft costs, and, uh, you know, design and all that. As you said, Gene, it's built in, right? So. Um, that's what I'd like to see, the September time frame, the interaction that I have with the board on this, with Paul Adams, our, our uh, finance chair, um, and I know Maria, you know, she has a background, and we've also sent her to some grant writing school, knowing that she could be a key person for the town, for any firm we hire. Uh, or retain on this. So, if everything looks good, and you know we get through all of that, it's it's possible that as we get into October, um, we might be looking at resolution to enter into the engagement, whatever that is. Yeah, you can start contract the first of any month. The first of any month. So October first, that would be fun. Um, well. <laughs> November 1st, just let the grants pass by. Realistically. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say this. I think she's hilarious. Right? <laughs> so 
So I'm showing my bias. I would like to kind of work with her. But you know what? There's other considerations right. that we have to, you know, um, realistically, um, I, I don't know, what, what is the first and third Thursday of October resolution meetings? Is it October 2nd and 16th? The other thing I might add is no, fifth and nineteenth. Fifth and nineteenth. Those are more realistic for when there will be a resolution to enter into a contract okay. and authorize. Sure, the fifth I can just you know start working. You can just backdate it to the first. That's no problem. Um, what I wanted to say though is I do write contracts for two years because you know being realistic, I could put something in the first year and it's still into the second year before you can find out about it. And when I do that, if you want to do that, then I keep the price the same for two years. Yeah. So. And like I said, without getting into much details, yeah. it really is foundational to all this is if the town board decides to do this, the, the known will be the contract for the two years and the expense. Mm -hmm. The unknown is if we'll ever get anything out of it. That's just a reality. Yeah. We, we look at presentations and we look at what you've gotten in, in the past and we know, you know, that's what the town board, this is this is something we've never done before with a grant program. And we, and we knew this when we sat down a year ago and started the think tank on it. As we were progressing through that, um, I think it fell off uh, pretty quickly, Patty, that there, this is not like those uh, attorneys that you see, hey, we don't get paid unless you get paid. <laughs> that is this contingency aspect of like, hey. I've got all those hungry mouths at the office to feed. If I waited that, for that, that's they would not be there. No. Well, so that's why we have contracts. Yeah. You have to know what your expenses are. Yeah. So that will be something that, you know, um, the board will be going back and forth with, you know, uh, in September. And, and I'll keep in communication with you um, <clears throat> in as real time as I can. Because the board might have questions. Right. And I want to right. avail them, and I, I'm sure you'll be okay, openly where they can contact you those sure. questions. Uh, that's our best way to get to October 5th and be able to make a, a you know, an educated decision on if we do that, a resolution to retain Gino and Alan's And I might just add that, you know, I'm working for you. I'm not an engineering firm looking for money for my firm. Whatever I do, I do for you. And when you see these projects that I've done, I'm as proud of them knowing that I helped them. And that's that's what that's what's kept me going all this time. So I would say that that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean that in a good way. You are proud of those. And, yeah. and you know it's it's a partnership with the community. They're proud of the of the product. Right. You're proud of how it got there. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's and when I see people using the project, like mm -hmm. Town and Gates, where they enclosed all their shelters, you know, and they rent them and they make revenues off them, I mean, they didn't have that, you know? Or I, we drive, we, when we get on the thruway, we drive past Pembroke, and the uh, Yancey Fancy Cheese Company is on an industrial road where I got money for the water and sewer, so that's how that started. Mm -hmm. And now there's other things going up there around it. So I, I'm very impressed with the palatial bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was great. Yeah, it was for it. Yeah. 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 Movie theater. Um, well, Jenny, any comments or questions? Or? Well, I think um, just a few things. You said, you know, how do you charge? You know, like percentage or hourly or, you know? No, just like a, a, monthly, a monthly charge. So it depends on the size of the client. They don't all pay the same. So. We'll get into that. Yeah. Like I said, tonight was more about, and we didn't really get into that with the final four. Yeah. Uh, tonight's not the. No, one of the things that I really liked about this approach, and it, it was something that came out of the think tank, as you call it, is that you know, the process so far has been all right, a project comes up, and we know we need to do it, let's go search for some money, but we're really not doing things proactively as in there's a wish list of all our department heads, right. things that they would like to do. And they can't possibly be aware of any financial assistance and all the grants that are out there. So we felt it was important for a, a, a multifaceted approach to this so that they could report some of the things that they needed, 
somebody else goes out to look for those grants because they know what's available mm -hmm. rather than just piecemealing it. So right. that's why I really do like this approach. Too bad you have to the sooner because they're going to miss invasive species, you know. Yeah. Oh, there's always another one. Yes. <coughs> well, probably next year. Uh, no, that one didn't come up last year. It only came up like maybe every other year. Some of them don't come up every year. But no, I'm not thinking basic species. That's what I'm talking about. Well, the species are there are always these species, yeah. yeah. But you have, you have water here too. So there's the water species and then there's the land species. And there's all kinds of them. Yeah. Bill, anything? I, no, no. I, I, I will say. I hope I haven't upset Bill because he's from the engineering firm side of the world before. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Bill. Well, it's my other life. <laughs> yes. okay. well, that's all right. right. We work with the engineers. We work with all those people you interviewed. I mean, when we need things, they're the ones that give us that stuff. But when we need something else, you know. How many clients do you have? Right now? About 15. Well, 15, probably. Got some new ones from the state of New York too. I don't know what that's all about. We're gonna find out. Mm -hmm. so. Hired another person too because I think they'll keep us busy. So. I think that concludes tonight's workshop. And thank you, thank you. Uh, Rick and Jean thank you. for coming in from Buffalo. Uh, thank you. Yeah. We will yeah. be in touch, believe me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. You just have cards if anybody wants to. Sure. Sure. Bell.